In this video, we're going to complete example one. We're going to factorize the following by taking out the highest common factor. So we're going to start with a little discussion. We're going to talk about what factorizing is and also what the highest common factor is all about as well. So to understand factorizing, we need to understand what expanding is. And that's what we've been doing in previous lessons. So let's say I have the expression uh, 3, then x plus 2 in brackets, and I'm told to expand this. How would I do that? Well, I multiply them. I multiply the 3 by the x, and I multiply the 3 by the 2. 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 2 is 6. All right, so if this is what expanding is, what is factorizing? Well, factorizing is just like expanding, except in reverse. For factorizing, you might start with 3x plus 6, and then you are asked to factorize it, and you would give an answer of 3 bracket x plus 2. Exactly the same as what we did over here, except in reverse. So how do we factorize? Well, in order to factorize, we need to find what is known as the highest common factor. So what's that? Well, we'll start with two numbers. We'll start with 20 and 30. And when we're talking about factors, we're just saying what numbers divide evenly into these. For example, 5. We can divide 20 by 5. 5 fits into 24 times. And 5 also fits into 30. It fits into 36 times. So one of the factors of 20 and 30 are 5. Okay, but there are other factors here. Uh, I can see that 2 is one of the factors. 1, of course. And also 10. Now, to be more specific, they're not just called factors. They're called common factors. And the reason we call them common factors is because both 20 and 30 share, have these factors in common. All right? They both have a factor of 1 or 2 or 5 or 10. So which of these common factors is the highest one? Well, obviously the 10. The 10 is the biggest or largest number that divides evenly or nicely into both 20 and 30. So if I was to factorize something that had these two numbers in it, let's say I had uh, 20x plus 30, what I would be looking for is that highest common factor, which is 10. And that highest common factor goes to the left of the brackets. And after I find that, I simply think to myself, what would go inside the brackets now? How would I turn 10 into 20? Well, I would times the 10 by 2. In fact, so I would times it by 2x, because I need the x as well. How many times does 10 go into 30? Well, 3 times. So I'll write here, plus 3. So in order to factorize expressions, we need to extract that highest common factor and put it to the left of the brackets. Now we need to point out that the highest common factor is not always just a number. Let's say, for example, that we didn't have just 20 and 30. Let's change it slightly. Let's say we had uh, 20x and 30x squared. That does change things. The, the largest number that fits into these two is still 10. And I'll write that down. The highest common factor, HCF for short, is 10, if we're talking about just the number. But we can divide both these terms by more than just 10. I can also divide them by x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that my highest common factor is not just 10. It's actually 10x. So this time, let's say we're factorizing 20x minus 30x squared. So first of all, we need to find the highest common factor. Uh, the highest common factor of 20 and 30 is 10. And as we mentioned, sometimes we've got to factor out 
one of our pronumerals, which in this case is going to be x. As we said before, the highest common factor is actually 10x, not just 10. So we put down our set of brackets, put a minus sign in between them, and then we think, okay, 10x times what would give me 20x? Well, 10x times 2. 10x times what would give me 30x squared? Well, 10 times 3 will give me 30, but I need x squared. I need another x. So I'm going to write this as 3x. Anyway, let's now move on to our three examples now. So I'm going to factorize 10x plus 15, and I'm just thinking, what is the highest common factor here? What's the largest number that fits into both 10 and 15? Well, 5. 5 fits into 10 and 15, and I can't think of anything larger than that. So I know that I need to have a 5 to the left of the brackets, and then I need to figure out what's going to go inside these brackets here. I know it's going to be a plus here. So 5 times what would give me 10x? Well, 5 times 2x would give me 10x. 5 times what would give me 15? Well, 5 times 3 will give me 15. So we've been able to factorize question A. And if you're ever unsure of whether you're correct or not, expand it. So we're going to check if it's correct by expanding, by multiplying the term to the left of the brackets by both terms inside it. 5 times 2x gives us 10x. I'll do this in green. And 5 times 3 gives us 15. So we can see that after factorizing and then expanding again, we go back to the original expression. So we've been able to check this. This must be the factorized version of this expression. Okay, now I'm just going to rub this green part out. Uh, we don't really need that. That's just for checking our answers. Let's now move on to question B. What is the highest common factor here? And it could be more than just a number, but let's focus on the number first. I've got an 18 and I've got a 6. What's the largest number that fits inside of both of these? Well, 6 fits into 18 three times, and 6 also fits into 6 just once. So that's got to be the largest or highest common factor here, just focusing on the numbers. But I reckon we're going to have some A's and B's here. How many times can we fit A into the first term, and how many times can we fit A into the second term? Well, we can fit A into the first term twice, because we've got A squared, and once for the one on the right. So we, we take whichever one has the lower power. So we've only got one A. So we're going to put that next to our 6. And then let's look at our Bs. We've got 3 Bs here and 5 Bs here. So whichever one has the lower power. So we'll go B to the power of 3. Okay, and then our set of brackets. Uh, it's going to have a minus sign between it. Um, and then we're going to think, okay, what would I multiply 6AB cubed by so that I get 18A squared B to the power of 5? Well, first of all, focusing on the numbers, 6 times 3 is 18. So we'll write our 3 down. I'm just giving myself a bit more room here. Um, this one has a squared, but we only have 1a, so we need one extra a. So we're going to write a next to the 3. We need 5b's, but here we've only got 3 of them, so we need 2 more. So I'm going to write b squared. Okay, next I need to make it 6. It's already 6, so I could times it by 1. I don't think I really need to put that 1 down. Here I've got an a. There I've got an A, so I don't need any more A's, and I also don't need any more B's. So what am I going to put here? Well, I'm actually going to change my mind. I'm going to put that 1 down. Because if I multiply this term here by 1, I'm just going to get the same thing, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so that was not too difficult, I hope. Now, if you want to check whether this is correct, we just need to expand it. We need to multiply the term to the left of the brackets by each term inside the brackets to check it. 6 times 3 is 18. a times a gives me a squared. 
and b to the power of 3 times b to the power of 2, we add the powers, giving us b to the power of 5. That's looking pretty good. These two terms are the same. And we also know that if we multiply something by 1, it remains the same. So it just remains as 6ab to the power of 3, and there would be a minus sign between it. So we've come back to our original expression, which means we must have factorized it correctly. So we're happy with that. And I'm just going to rub out this working out to save confusing anyone. It was purely that part in green was purely just to check that my answer was correct. Okay, moving now on to question C. Let's focus on the numbers first. We're trying to find the highest common factor. Um, does 9 fit into 21? No. Uh, I know 21 can be found with 7 times 3. Um, 7 doesn't fit into 9, but 3 does. So I'd say that 3 is our highest common factor here. Okay. Uh, we also need to look at the pronumerals. We've got three C's here and four C's here. We take the one with the smallest power. So C to the power of three. Three was the smallest power. We've got one D here and no D over here. So we actually won't use D down here. All right. So we'll do our set of brackets. I'll just do one bracket to start with. So I'm not having to readjust my brackets. What would I multiply this by to get 9 CQD? Well, 3 times 3 is 9, so I need a 3 here. I've already got 3 Cs, which is what I want, but I need another D. So I'll write this as 3D, and I'll put a minus sign here. I want to turn this into 21 C to the power of 4. I need to multiply my 3 by 7, so I'll put down my 7. Here I've only got three C's, I need one extra C. So I'll write C next to it and close my brackets. And you know what? I'm going to double check it. I'm going to expand it. I want to see if I go back to my original expression. What do I get when I multiply them? Three times three is nine. And then I've got C to the power of three and D. I'm just going to write them next to that. Then my minus sign, 3 times 7 is 21. Here I've got 3 C's and another C makes 4 C's, C to the power of 4. And we can see that we've gone back to the original expression, so we must have factorised it correctly. We're going to rub this out so as not to confuse anyone. Anyway, that concludes our video on example 1. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.